I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to do to properly optimize your YouTube videos so that you can get the views and visibility that you deserve. We're gonna actually go in depth and talk about the algorithm and the relationship that it has with the data to really recommend those videos out to different viewers and also have that show up in search results. So let's go ahead and get started. Hello, my people of the internet. Now, if you are new to me and this YouTube channel, we talk about all things YouTube. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss out. Now to optimize your videos for YouTube, it doesn't matter if YouTube's actually recommending your videos or your videos are actually showing up in search. It's all about this. Optimization's all about humans and it's all about the click. Now the AI and the algorithm is paying really close attention to the viewing behavior of people. What video thumbnails and titles people click on, but more importantly, what they don't click on. Now the algorithm's job is to predict what the viewers wanna watch, and so they're paying very close attention on what people click and what they don't click. So if you want your videos to be recommended by YouTube and actually rank higher in search, then you wanna pay very close attention to the click-through rate. When you have a higher click-through rate, that tells YouTube that people are actually interested in your content, and that's why it all starts with the click. So to really optimize your videos for YouTube, that leads me to tip number one, custom thumbnails. 90% of all top performing videos that are happening here right today on YouTube are using custom thumbnails. So your thumbnail strategy should not be an afterthought, but it should be your first thought. Now, over the course of my career, I've worked with some of the top brands and businesses and creators on the planet. And I can tell you that the main focus that we do is really focus in on getting that thumbnail just right, getting that thumbnail so that it actually pops on the page. Now, one of the creators that I've been working with for quite some time is Mr. Beast, and I can tell you that he not only spends some hours, but sometimes days getting that right thumbnail because having the right type of thumbnail is that important. So when designing your next custom thumbnail, make sure that you put the energy and time that you need to really go through this. And here's a couple rules that you can go by. First, think of mobile first. Most of the traffic that happens here on YouTube happens with a mobile device. And if it looks good on mobile, it's gonna look good on desktop. Next, really use color in your custom thumbnails to make that thumbnail just pop and stand out from all the other thumbnails that you're competing with. Next, keep text to minimum. And now I know this is hard for some type of channels, but if you can explain it without words, that's a lot more powerful and it will actually draw you more into that thumbnail. Also, you might wanna use emotion in your thumbnails. It really depends on the type of content you're creating, but that type of emotion creates curiosity and curiosity goes for the click. And the next one is be honest. And the reason why, if you have a sensational thumbnail and it doesn't necessarily correlate with the video, that is a very bad thing. Yeah, you might have a high click-through rate, but if your average view duration is bad, then that video ain't going nowhere. And this last one is really analyze your channel, analyze your thumbnails, really dig deep of which one actually has a higher click-through rate and why. Look for those patterns. And I can tell you when you find the patterns, you can see why things happen on your channel. You can make better data-driven decisions and that's what we're all about. Tip number two, use catchy clickable titles. Now I can tell you, if you have a great thumbnail that pops, the first thing that we do as humans is do a quick glance to that title and that's when we should earn the click. So don't try to optimize your thumbnails for search engines. What we need to do is optimize it for people because people are the ones that are actually searching and then actually it sets the trends when they are interested in a certain topic. Here's a couple good rules to live by when doing your next title. Be catchy, but yet concise. What you need to do is keep it under 60 characters because then that way it can show up and you can see the full text in mobile and also suggestion. I know that YouTube is giving us all 100 characters, but if it looks spammy, it disconnects with people that are trying to watch your videos. Next is you wanna put your main and primary keyword the closest you can to the front of that title that carries a little weight with the algorithm in the sense of getting you ranked and also getting it suggested. Also, what we wanna do is create that title that accurately represents the video and it is relevant. <laughs> Those are two things because if it's the sensational title and thumbnail, they click on it and it doesn't necessarily represent that thumbnail, that is a very bad thing because they're gonna bounce. Tip number three, write a solid searchable description. 
Now the description is pretty much the most underutilized asset that we have when optimizing our videos. Now I know a lot of content creators put a lot of energy and time in that title and that thumbnail, but realistically, if you want the algorithm and the AI to really look at your data and that correlation, you have to use the right keywords in your description and write a solid description and that will help you get more views and visibility in search. Now to really optimize your description, it's in two parts, above the fold and below the fold. Now, above the fold is the most important area. It's where YouTube really looks at what's going on. Plus, that's what people see. So you have 200 characters that you're able to put that call to action to get them to watch the video or to find out more information about the video that will really re-engage them from your title. So the first thing that I do is reinforce that primary keyword, that primary keyword phrase in the title. And I look for complementary keywords to use in those 200 characters. Next, tell the viewer what to expect. People are wanting wanting to watch videos and when you tell them what to expect, they're gonna be more apt to click. Next, you wanna write like a human and optimize for that click-through rate. Now we're ready to optimize that description below the fold. Now this is where we can give the extra information like links to our social, time codes to watch the video easier. You could even use hashtags. You can even give a bigger description of what's actually in the video. This is a very underutilized area of the description and it can lead to getting more suggested videos by YouTube because if people click on a video that's in your library, guess what happens? It starts to create that correlation data between this video that they're watching right now and another video, even if it's a small percentage, going to that other video. Also a word of warning, please do not use and reuse the same description that turns viewers off, but also the algorithm is actually paying attention to that as well. Tip number four, use cards and end screens. Now, I can tell you that when we actually started this video, we talked about really optimizing for humans and that the AI is really paying a close attention of what people do. This is a tip. This is a strategy that will help you get more video views. And the reason why is it creates this data relationship between your content. The AI is looking for these patterns and this is a pattern that they can actually see and they actually track. I mean, think about this for a second. So if there's like four or 6% of the people that actually watch this video right here that watch this next video right there, the AI is paying attention and it follows the viewer. And so it's going to start recommending in the next up that video that you're actually recommending through a card or through an end screen. In every video, I would definitely use a card to promote a video and I would look for a video that would be similar or something that people currently watching your video would be interested in. Also, make sure your card's not at the beginning of your video. That's a big mistake because if people are watching it and they click off on it, that sends some bad signals to this video that you're trying to promote. Do it at the end of the video in the last two thirds. And screens are super powerful and they're really underutilized. And I've seen a lot of creators that don't put any end cards on any of their videos and I think they're nuts. And the reason why is because you have the most engaged viewer right there, right at your fingertips. They just finished your video. And if you offer them something that they can watch next or to subscribe, that's key because you don't wanna lose them to go on to another video on an unrelated channel or to go off of YouTube completely. That's a very bad thing. What we wanna do is pull them into your content. And that's the reason why I use this strategy. I use an end screen called best for viewer. I let the algorithm decide what's gonna be best for that viewer based on their viewing patterns and behavior. And then I also look at that target video, something that's related that I used in that card. And ultimately, definitely, we want them to subscribe, right? Because if we can get them to subscribe, turn on the bell notifications, that creates that momentum that we're looking for. Tip number five, write relevant tags. Now at VidCon this year, I did a presentation where I went in depth of how YouTube's automatically creating tags in our videos. It's a really interesting thing. And YouTube said this, your video title, thumbnail, and description are the most important pieces of the metadata for video discovery. These main pieces of information help viewers decide which videos to watch. Tags can be useful if the content on your video is commonly misspelled. Otherwise, tags play a minimal role in your video's discovery. That's a bold statement from YouTube, and it's something that I've been preaching for quite some time because I really am a student of the AI, and I know that their tagging system's important, but I can tell you where they use minimal 
minimal role, I'm going to take that minimal role until they take it away. So I'm gonna always tag, I'm gonna tag this way. The first tag will be the primary keyword that I'm using in the title, that primary keyword that I'm using in the description, then I'm gonna use relevant keywords, and I'm gonna use a tool called TubeBuddy. You can find it in the description below, it's gonna save you a ton of times to do that. Now, a couple rules that I use on tagging is I don't over tag. I don't want it to look like spam. I don't wanna, I only want relevant keywords that's gonna help the video really succeed. Now I use other keywords and use them as tags and I put the most relevant close to the beginning and I only do 300 characters. Now I know that you can do 500 characters here in tags and just because you can do 500 characters doesn't mean you should. Now before we jump into the power tips to really optimize your videos for YouTube, I want to give you a challenge. The next video that you upload, promise me that you will actually do the tips that I recommended and make sure you tag me on socials because I wanna see it. And I also want to feature a few of you in upcoming videos. Ready for the power tips? Here we go. Power tip number one, use closed captioning and also subtitles. Now, if you want a larger audience and you wanna get more views and visibility, be sensitive to people that need to read what's being said and not just hearing it. Do not rely on YouTube's automatic closed captioning system because this could really affect your ranking and also your CPMs. I've tested it, I'm telling you. <laughs> Don't rely on it. Tip number two, use default profiles with TubeBuddy. Now I can tell you I'm a big fan of TubeBuddy, have been for years, and the reason why, it saves me so much time. Really, it does. And it gives you the ability to really optimize your channel in different ways. And let me explain what I do every single upload on all the channels that I own, all the channels that I manage is default profiles. I can actually select a profile that I've created and it can auto fill in a boilerplate for my descriptions and my tags. This saves me a ton of time and then I can go and uh, tweak it and personalize it for that specific video. You can find that link for TubeBuddy down below in the description. Now for power tip number three, you need to watch this video right here because I talked to you how to actually optimize your thumbnails to get them to pop. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and we're gonna see you on the next video.